Hi, my name is Kate James. I'm a cataloger and a former member of the RDA Steering Committee. This video is about subscribing to documents in the new RDA Toolkit. It replaces a previous version of this video that I did in July 2020 because with the September 2020 release of the new toolkit, there were additional features added to the subscribing to doction, excuse me, subscribing to documents function that I wanted you to know about. In case you're wondering what I mean by documents, this is user contributed content that's part of the RDA toolkit. So it's not official content, but you may find it very helpful. So it might be a workflow about um, creating a metadata description set for a person or an application profile about which options to apply for diachronic works, for example. In order to access these documents, you need to be logged into the toolkit with your user profile. I know that I'm logged in because I can see both my institution name over here on the left and my username over here on the right. My username is whatever I uh, put into the boxes when I created my user profile. So I know right now that I'm logged in with my user profile so I can access documents by clicking here or I can also go down to this box that says documents and I can click and open the documents box here or open an individual document that I'm subscribed to down here. You probably don't have any documents listed here because you're not subscribed to anything, but once you subscribe, they'll show up down here. And by the way, when a document is updated, you just automatically get the updated content. You don't need to download anything it will just show up updated for you the next time you look at it. So now I'm gonna open up the documents window. So this documents collection tab shows the contributed documents, which are documents I've created, and then subscriptions. So notice with these contributed documents, the access is set to global. This means that anybody who's logged into the toolkit with their user profile can see them. If I had them set to private, only I could see them and they wouldn't show up on the list of subscriptions. So if somebody tells you to subscribe to a document and you go to subscriptions and you can't find it, it could be because they have not set the access uh, in such a way that you can see it. So notice that the subscriptions list and the contributed documents list is exactly the same right now. That's because uh, it automatically subscribes me to any document that I've created and there's no way to unsubscribe to documents that you've created unless you were to just delete the document, which you probably don't want to do. So let's say I want to subscribe to a document that I didn't create. I'll click here on the subscribe tab. Now it opens up a list that has 30 documents, which isn't so bad, but if I wanted to filter, I could do so a couple of different ways over here. If I want to find all of the documents that deal with the RDA entity nomen, I could type in the word nomen, for example, and search. And now I have a list of 15 documents. This is just a simple keyword search, so you may find that some of these documents are more useful to you than others. Now, let's say I want to clear that search result. I just click on the X here, and I'm back to 30 documents. You could also filter by category or language or institution. A quick word about filtering by language. This is dependent on the person who created the document setting this correctly. And as you can see, it's a drop-down list. So if the person didn't actually set it to a language, it would be set to the first one on the list, which is Abkhazian. So if the document was in French, but they didn't set it, uh, and you were filtering for French documents, you wouldn't find it because it would be set to Abkhazian, for example. Another thing to be cautious about is that for English, there's English UK and English US. There's no just English. As an English speaker, I don't care whether I'm looking at British English or American English. I can easily read either one of them, but because it's only set to filter by English UK or English US, if I filter by English US, I might miss out on documents from the British Library that I'd like to see because they would have it set to English UK, I presume. So perhaps you don't want to filter by language if you're an English speaker and you have no preference about what kind of English you care about. 
Another thing I can do is to filter by institution, as you can see here. So let me select ALA. And now I just have two documents. Now I can subscribe to a document right now, or I can take a look at it to decide if it's one I really want to subscribe to. So I can look at it by just clicking on the title here. This opens up the document in my window. Now, if I realize I do want to subscribe to this document, uh, there's no perfect way to get back to where you were. If you click on documents over here, you have to go back and click on subscribe again, and then it clears your filter. And so you have to click on the filter again, ALA, and then now you can see your list. If I clicked on my back browser, it would still have taken me back to the documents page. And then I have to click on subscribe again. So just remember what you were looking at before you click on the document name. Let's say I want to subscribe to this document called test 15. I'll just click on this and notice how it's no longer active because I'm subscribed. So I can only subscribe once I can keep subscribing. Once I'm subscribed, it shows up down here in my subscribe documents list. It's in alphabetical order. So test 15 is at the bottom. If I were to click on this, it would just open up the document in a window and then I could start working from that. If I decide I don't wanna be subscribed to this document, just click on this trash can and now it's gone. Let me go back to subscribe. Notice how it cleared my filter. If I decide, oh no, I really did wanna be subscribed to that document, um, all I would have to do is find it again and click subscribe to document. Let's say uh, I'd like to subscribe to institution. Why would I want to do this, you might wonder. Because this enables me to be easily subscribed to all the documents created by an institution without having to go through the list and pick them all out. And it doesn't just subscribe me to the documents that are in the toolkit now, it subscribes me to future documents the institution might create. So if I wanted to subscribe to the documents from the DACH consortium, I could just click on subscribe to institution in one of them. DACH uh, consortium is a group of German speaking libraries from Germany, Austria, and Switzerland, by the way. So I'll just click on subscribe to institution for one of them. And so notice how it changed for all of them because I just became automatically subscribed. And I let this refresh and now scroll down and you can see the documents in my subscription. Now this is an all or nothing thing, which means I can't just unsubscribe to one of them without unsubscribing to all of them. Watch what happens when I click on the trash can by one of them. I get this window that's warning me that because it's through an institution subscription, if I remove the subscription next to this one, it removes the subscription for all of them. I'll click on okay and now they're all gone. If I realized, oh no, I didn't wanna do that, um, I can go back to subscribe. Now, at this point, as you can see, it's still not letting me subscribe to institution because I don't know, this. it needs to refresh. So I can do that by going to the home page, clicking on RDA Toolkit. And now if I go back to documents, and back to subscribe, it'll let me subscribe to them again. So subscribe to institution, I'm now subscribed to all of them. And it, you know, it's not a big deal if you are subscribed to multiple documents from an institution and there's just one you don't wanna use, you can just ignore it in your list, uh, but you can't get rid of it without getting rid of all of them. So I just wanted you to see down here, they're all back and notice that they came up in alphabetical order. That's all I have to say about subscribing to documents. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you find this new document functionality useful. Bye.